In this video, I'll cover how to change your materials. There are three ways to change the materials in Home Designer. One is through the dialog for the specific object. The second is using the Material Painter tool. And the third is using the Material Eyedropper tool. In this video, I'll cover changing the materials through the Objects dialog and using the Material Painter tool. The Material Eyedropper and Color Chooser tools will be covered in a separate video. Let's go into the program and get started. In the first process, you can change the materials for an object by going into the object dialog. In this case, let's open up the stool dialog by double clicking on this kitchen stool. Inside of the dialog, you'll find a panel for materials. In this case, this bar stool has two different materials, one for the legs and two for the seat. And if I want to change the material for the seat, I can click on the material component, come down and choose select material. This will open up the Select Material dialog, allowing you to go into the library, browse into the different folders, and find the materials that you want to change. In this case, I'm going to scroll down, find the wood materials, and underneath the alder folder, I'm going to come over and just choose one of the alder materials. You'll see a preview of the material in the dialog, and when you close the dialog, the material for that object is then updated. All of the different components in Home Designer can have their materials changed that way. I find it an easier process to use the Material Painter tool, browse into the library, find the color, and then apply it in the 3D view. Let's take a look. You can access a Material Painter either in the menu or by clicking on a material in the library itself. Let's begin by using the Material Painter found on the toolbar in the upper section of the program when the Material Painter opens the Select Material dialog. It is using the same color that is currently active in my library on the right hand side of the screen. You can browse the available colors in the Select Materials dialog which is also the library itself and once you find the color that you're after you can select the color, close the dialog, Notice that my icon has changed to a spray can and now I can point and click on the stool itself to make the change. Let's talk a little bit about the scoping tools and how to change the way the material painter works. Currently my icon is in solid body mode. That's the indication of the spray can. You can come down while you're still in this mode and change the mode to a blend mode. This will change your cursor to a paint roller and now when you click on the other stool you will notice that the color is now blending with the wood tone that's already on that stool as opposed to using a solid paint. It's the blend mode versus the paint mode and you can easily toggle that on and toggle it off. The other tools are called scoping tools you'll see in the lower left hand menu and currently I'm on the component mode which is the tool clear in the left lower left corner and the component mode will spray the material only on the single component the object mode would spray it on the entire object and the room mode in the entire room let's change it to room mode and what's going to happen now is when I spray this on the material in this stool right here, it's actually going to change all three stools because it's going to change that exact material out in the room for that same material. And as I click, you'll notice those stools do change, in fact, very quickly. The other scoping tools are floor mode and plan mode. Everything on this floor that has that same color will be applied using the Material Painter. And the plan mode, if you have upper floors or lower floors, it will change that material in the entire plan. Very powerful tools, but also can be dangerous because you may be painting a material in a room or on a floor and not realize it's changing materials on other floors. I would encourage you, if you use these modes, before you close the material painter, go back to the component mode, make it the active mode. That way, when you reuse the tool, you will not be in a position of painting things on other floors that you don't realize you're going to do. The other way you can access Material Painter is to browse over into the library. Currently I'm under the Sherwin-Williams paint folder and I've selected a handful of colors in here. When you click on the color, 
and move into the plan itself. Notice my cursor is now back in the material painter mode. I'm in the blend mode, which would now stain over this hardwood. And you can see the effects using those colors. Just to show you the difference between the stain mode and the solid paint mode, when I paint over the flooring, since this is a solid paint, notice how I lost the texture on the wood grain. So depending on what you're going to paint, make sure you use the material painter in the correct mode. In this case, I just press the undo key. You can use the material eyedropper to pick up the material from the stool and apply it onto the other stools. Again, it also has scoping in the lower right hand corner and this is also covered in a separate video. But the material eyedropper will allow you to then apply those same materials from like objects to other objects to make the process fast. Let's take a look at using the Adjust Materials Definition tool and how to customize your colors. Using the Adjust Material Definition tool, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on the Full Height Cabinet. In the Define Material dialog, you'll see that it's a zebra wood with a fairly dark brown color. You can click on this color and use the Color Chooser tool and pick up any other color on your screen, including an image you may have that may be one of your favorite photographs that you can blend this color with. As long as I have the Sherwin-Williams colors open, I'm just going to come over here, click on a particular color swatch, and that will then set that color in my spectrum. And you can adjust the tone of this to be either lighter or darker and pull it down to your liking. So let's see how this looks using this fairly light tan color. Once we make the change, I'm also going to come over to the texture, which is the image pattern of the cabinet material itself. And to make that happen, I'm going to choose the option to blend with the color. When I click that, you'll see the new color and determine if that color will work for you. Probably want to have that a little bit darker, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we close the dialog. Now you can see the much lighter zebra wood and effectively we've created a scene with no contrast in it. And one final thing I'm going to show you that's available only in Home Designer Pro and that's how to access your full materials in your plan. Now I opened the same plan we've been working on in Home Designer Pro. I did not save the cabinet color that we'd created. You can access your materials that has been used in the plan. If you come underneath your 3D menu, there is an option in Home Designer Pro to show you all the materials being used in your plan. This will open up the list of all the different materials in here and it's a nice concise list that you have access to. You can manage each of the materials in the plan by editing the colors, making a copy, and purging unused materials. You can also access this list in Home Designer Pro when you use the Material Painter. The Select Material dialog will show you all of the library materials. In Home Designer Pro, you also have access to all of the materials that is being used in your plan. And then you can simply come over here, select the material, and then apply it to the object as you see fit for your designs. You can learn more about how to apply materials in 3D in our built-in help file. We also have support articles available on the Home Designer software website. And thanks for watching the video.